A duck with stripes? A pig with feathers? Click on the buttons to help the animals on Hoggett Farm look and feel like their old selves again. Quack, my feathers are back. Quackity quack, my feathers are back. Oh, wow, it's good to have my fur back. Timber! Oh, wow, it's good to have my fur back. Timber! I'm happier than a pig in a poke. Timber! <laughs> Yippee, it's good to have my wool. Welcome to the Curious Curio Cabinet. Mrs. Hoggett has quite the collection of cute little curios and challenging questions about each one. Listen to each question, then click on the answers hidden below. Click on an animal that rhymes with wish. Good job! Click on four animals that have hairy coats in real life. <coughs> Great job! Click on two animals that have feathers in real life. <laughs> Great work. Click on the animal that can eat leaves high up in a tree. Great work. Click on the animal that has smooth green skin. <laughs> Terrific. Click on two animals that have wings. <laughs> Very good. Click on the animal that has scales. <laughs> Click on six animals that belong on a farm. Great job. Click on the animal that hops. <laughs> Terrific. Find and click on the four green jacks. <laughs> Good work. Find and click on the four red jacks. <laughs> Super! Find and click on the three purple jacks.
Almost. Now try again. <laughs> Good work. Click on three animals that begin with the letter C. <laughs> Great job. Click on three animals that end with the letter G. <laughs> Excellent. Click on two animals that rhyme with fog. <laughs> Good job. Click on four different items that end with a K. Click on the item that makes a sound like this. Hidden pictures puzzles to fuzzle your brain. Find the objects hidden in the picture and click on them. If you can't find one of the pieces, click on the object in the Find Us box and its location will be revealed to you. When you found all the objects, click Print to make a picture you can color. The passengers on these rides are feeling dizzy and want to get off. Find the foods they won't want to eat when the ride comes to a stop. A hot dog, a box of candy, ice cream, sardines, and a slice of pizza. The pig and the farmer regarded each other. As the farmer pronounced the tiny creature's weight to the contest judge, an unusual thing happened. <laughs> Strange. For a fleeting moment, something passed between them. A faint sense of some common destiny. He patted the little pig one more time and gently returned him to the box. <laughs> The next day, Arthur Hoggett received the good news. He had won the contest by guessing the piglet's weight exactly. Hoggett returned a short time later, pig in hand. Terrific!
The pig and the farmer regarded each other. As the farmer pronounced the tiny creature's weight to the contest judge, Oops! Okay, good job. The next day, Arthur Huggett received the good news. He had won the contest by guessing the piglet's weight exactly. Huggett returned a short time later, pig in hand. The next day, Arthur Huggett received The next day, Arthur Huggett received the good news. He had won the contest by guessing the piglet's weight exactly. Huggett returned a short time later, pig in hand. Never having kept a pig before, the farmer put the small pink pig in the barn with the other animals. It seemed a small thing to do, but like many small things, it marked the beginning of something much larger. I want my mom! Good job! You see, the barn was the center of animal life on Hoggett Farm. It was here where the pig met Fly, one of the farmer's prized sheep dogs. The little piglet had endured many difficulties in his short life, but the loss of his mother was, without a doubt, the worst. I want my mom! Even though Fly was only just a dog, she was also a mother, and the sight of the poor little pig's tears moved her deeply. Excellent! The pig told Fly that he didn't know his name. Our mom had called us all the same, Babe. Fly said she would call him that because it would make him feel more at home. That would be nice, said the little pig, as he snuggled against the sheepdog's soft fur. And so it was that the kindly sheepdog adopted the little pig, despite the objections of her husband Rex.
Great work. Rex's duty was to uphold the law among the Hoggett farm animals. This law was based on one simple fact. To each creature its own destiny. Every animal in its proper place. Rex was not pleased with Fly, but decided to allow her to look out for the little pig just until he finds his feet. It was a decision he would soon regret. Chapter 2. The Way Things Are The Hoggett Farm woke the... Great work. The Hoggett farm woke the next morning to the shrill quack-a-doodle-doo of Ferdinand the duck. This peculiar behavior was beginning to wear a bit thin with Mrs. Hoggett, not to mention the rooster. The duck's strange conduct and disregard for the law upset Rex. And now he had to deal with Fly's bending of the rules for the pig. <laughs> close. Try again. You were close. Try again. Excellent! Fly knew the rules. When the boss called the sheepdogs into the house for breakfast, she told Babe to wait outside. Only dogs and cats inside the house, she said. That's just the way things are. Curious, to know what he was missing, Babe climbed the wood pile to peek in the window. Hello? Suddenly, a loud crash was heard echoing across the barnyard. Okay, good job. When the sheepdogs went to help Farmer Hockett tend his flock, the little pig was told once again to stay behind. Tending sheep is dog's work, Fly said. You're a pig. Your job's to stay here and eat your food. Babe was very confused as he watched Rex. Fly and all the puppies trot off behind the boss to the fields.
That'll do. Babe started exploring the barnyard when he heard something new and trotted off to investigate. The sound was coming from an old covered pen. <coughs> You're a sheep, he cried. An elderly ewe named Ma was recuperating inside the pen. She proceeded to tell Babe terrible things about Rex and Fly. She called them wolves and killers, and they were cruel and vicious to sheep. That'll do. The pig was more mixed up than ever. Was his new mother really a killer? Babe spent the entire day hearing the ewe's words repeat themselves over and over in his head. Wolves is cruel, sheep, 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 savages, savages, savages. That evening, when Fly came back from the fields, she gave Babe a big, slurpy kiss. As he nuzzled against her, Babe decided that the old sheep must be wrong. Maybe Ma was confused because she was sick. Chapter 3. A Carefully Made Plan Great job! The next morning, Babe woke to a new sound, a mechanical rooster. At least that's what Ferdinand called the new alarm clock Mrs. Huggett had bought. Ferdinand was crushed. Just when he had discovered a purpose in life other than ending up on a dinner plate, he was replaced by a machine. He knew the clock had to go. And Babe was just the pig to help with the heist. <laughs> Great job! Ferdinand explained his plan to Babe. He was to go inside, up the stairs, into the bedroom, get the clock, and bring it back down to Ferdinand. There was just one problem. Babe couldn't do it. The duck was stunned. Why not? Ferdinand squawked. It's against the rules, Babe replied. No pigs allowed in the house. Okay, good job. Ferdinand pulled Babe aside to tell him the facts of life about ducks on a farm. Oh no. Humans eat ducks, especially plump ones. Babe was shocked. Ferdinand explained his two rules for survival. Rule 1. Keep thin and don't get fat. Rule 2. Be indispensable. If we don't get rid of the clock, he moaned, I'm a goner for sure.
Good work. Babe slipped quietly through the doggy door into the house. His biggest obstacle was the old house cat, Duchess. Babe tried to stay as far away from the sleeping cat as possible. Halfway across the room, his chubby hips nudged a table. A ball of yarn bounced out of the knitting basket, off the table, and rolled straight for Duchess. Then right before it hit the cat, the yarn stopped. Okay. Good job. Babe sighed, then continued his careful trek across the living room. Ferdinand watched through the window in horror. Some of the yarn had gotten tangled around one of Babe's feet. With each step, the yarn pulled tighter and tighter. Tugging at the knitting basket, paint pots, the lamp, and the vase. Very. Ferdinand panicked. He tried everything to get Babe's attention, but the pig didn't hear him. You fought, you fought, take the string off your foot. The duck bolted through the doggy door into the house, stopping Babe dead in his tracks. He gently untangled the yarn from Babe's foot and sent him outside to stand guard. Choked with allergies and runny nose, Ferdinand continued the mission. That'll do. In the bedroom, Ferdinand peered up at the hated mechanical rooster. Guard what? came a tiny voice from the shadows. This surprised the duck so much that he jumped straight to the ceiling. It was Babe. Just don't say a word, groaned the duck. When I knock the clock onto the bed, you grab it in your mouth and we're out of here, okay? Good job! Ferdinand and Babe, clock in mouth, crept back into the living room. Duchess stretched, snagging her claw in the yarn which was still wrapped around the furniture. A sneeze twitched in the duck's nose. Both froze in horror. Then Ferdinand sneezed. Babe dropped the clock. The clock went off. Duchess woke up. The yawn jerked, and the farmhouse exploded with crashes, splashes, smashes, squeals, and squawks.
The Hoggets returned to a disaster. The living room was wrecked. The dollhouse smashed. The lamp shattered. The vase broken, and paint covered everything, including the cat. Two sets of footprints immediately identified the culprits. Later, Rex called a meeting in the barn. Babe was told that a pig's place was in the mud wallow, not in the barn. And absolutely never in the house. Almost. Now try again. Oops. Very good. In the months that followed the clock incident, Babe tried his best to stay out of Rex's way. When Fly's pups were old enough, Farmer Hoggett sold them to other farmers in the area. It was a sad day for Fly. Only Babe managed to cheer her up. Can I call you Mum? He asked softly. Fly nuzzled the piglet tenderly. At last, Babe truly found his place at Hoggett Farm. The winter holidays arrived at Hoggett Farm the same as they did every year. This year, Emma Hoggett had a special Christmas dinner planned for her family, a nice roast pork. As the day drew nearer, she began to worry that the little pig might be too small to feed her entire family. Arthur Hoggett's reservations about the small creature was somewhat different from his wife's. Good. The fact was, the farmer had begun to soften on the pig. He wondered aloud whether it wouldn't be better to spare him until the spring. First place in the ham contest at the county fair would certainly be a feather in Mrs. Hoggett's cap, he reasoned. Hoggett knew his wife's weakness for blue ribbons. For the pig. And sure enough, the Christmas menu was changed to duck a l'orange. Okay. Ferdinand groaned as he watched the festivities inside the house. The sight was enough to make up his mind. I'm out of here. Later, as Ferdinand jumped up on the gate to leave Hoggett Farm, he turned to Babe. Good luck, pig. And remember, fat is fatal. And with that, he took off. <laughs> Babe then heard a faint sound of bleating coming from the fields. Good job! The pig knew it was against the rules to leave the farm, but something was definitely wrong. <coughs> Babe wriggled through the fence and ran to find the source of the bleating. Babe watched strange men and dogs herd the panicked sheep into a truck. He ran down to ask Ma what was happening, but was quickly chased off by one of the dogs.
Super! Babe ran squealing back to the farmhouse. Mr. Huggett saw Fly's ears perk up. Something was wrong. The farmer raced off in his truck as the dogs and Babe followed. They arrived at the pasture just as the thieves crashed through the fence at top speed. If it hadn't been for Babe, the whole flock could have been stolen. Chapter 6. A pig that thinks it's a dog? The next morning, Arthur Hoggett noticed the little pig carefully separate the brown hens from the white. <laughs> Ever since the day he thanked the pig for saving his sheep, the farmer had gotten the notion that the creature might make a good sheep pig. It was a crazy idea, but one that just wouldn't go away. That morning, Hoggett called Rex and Fly to go to work. Then he called, Come, pig! Babe was delighted to be joining Fly and Rex in the sheep fields. Rex was not amused. Is Rex mad at me? The little pig asked. Just stay out of his way today, Fly advised. He'll get over it soon enough. <coughs> she hoped she was right. Very good. Babe watched in awe as Fly and Rex circled the flock of sheep and drove them into a pen. While the boss clipped away the sheep's heavy wool coats, Fly gave Babe a few tips on sheep herding. Speed's not the thing, she said. The sheep have to know who's boss. Good. After lunch, the boss opened the gate and called, Away to me, pig. He wants you to drive the sheep out into the field, Fly said. The pig tried his best, but the sheep just laughed at him. <laughs> Hoggett turned away, thinking his imagination had run away with him. Suddenly, the entire flock marched two by two out of the pen, with Babe trotting along behind them. That That night, a dark cloud fell over Hoggett Farm. Rex was furious. Fly had broken the law by encouraging the little pig. When she tried to calm him down, Rex attacked her. Hoggett heard the fighting dogs and rushed to pull them apart. Rex bit the boss. He had committed the worst possible crime for a dog. Chapter 7. The Sheep Pig
Okay. Rex was chained up and given a shot to quiet him down. Fly's foreleg was stitched and dressed. Now the farmer had a real problem. There was still work to be done. Not knowing what else to do, he called Babe. As he watched the little pig perform the tasks as well as any sheepdog, the farmer's eccentric notion quickly grew into something more. Excellent! Every year, the country's best sheepdogs and their bosses gathered for the Grand National Sheepdog Trials. The competition was a source of great pride for both dog and man. Arthur Hoggett knew that little ideas that tickled and nagged and refused to go away should never be ignored, for in them lie the seeds of destiny. Emma Hoggett was accustomed to her husband being a bit of an eccentric, but when she discovered him constructing a sheepdog trial ring in the back pasture, a worried look crossed her face. When she noticed Babe and Fly watching attentively as the farmer led two sheep through the obstacle course, her worry turned to fear for the man's very sanity. A sheepdog trial consisted of an obstacle course through which a dog had to guide six sheep. The length of time combined with the number of mistakes the dog made going through the course was tallied into an overall score. Arthur Hoggett placed an immense amount of confidence in the wee pig. Seeing how quickly the tiny creature learned the course, he knew his confidence was well founded. As the day for the national trials drew nearer, Babe enjoyed the boss's training more and more. One morning, the pig rose before dawn to get an early start. As he waited for all the residents to awaken, he heard terrified bleating coming from the fields. Babe raced to see what was happening. The little pig watched in horror as wild dogs attacked the sheep. Terrific! The growling dogs pulled down a ewe. It was Ma. Babe became filled with rage and charged one of the wild dogs, knocking it on its side. As he went after the others, all three dogs ran howling away with their tails between their legs. <coughs> Babe returned and licked Ma's wound. Blood smeared his snout. As Ma sighed her last breath, Babe finally understood why the sheep called dogs wolves. Hoggett, Rex, and Fly
Very good. Hoggett, Rex, and Fly saw Babe's bloody snout. Home, pig, Hoggett said coldly. Fly knew there was only one fate for any animal that killed a sheep on Hoggett Farm. But Fly could never believe that Babe was a sheep killer. So she decided to do something she had never done before. Talk to the sheep. The sheep dog spoke very slowly, for it was a cold fact of nature that sheep were stupid. Please, she began, tell me what happened this morning. The sheep had never known a wolf to say please. Finally, one answered. The sheep spoke very slowly for it was a cold fact of nature that wolves were stupid. Babe saved us, a ewe told her. He chased the wolves away. Babe stared up at the long metal tubes of the shotgun in the boss's hands. The farmer slowly leveled his gun at the little pig in whom he had placed such high hopes. Fly's frantic barks caused the farmer to turn away for a moment. As he slowly turned back to his task, Mrs. Hoggett called out to him. <coughs> Hoggett unloaded his gun and smiled to himself. The man who never used two words when one would do couldn't help himself. Good pig, he said. Good, good pig. Chapter 9 Pig of Destiny A few days later, Emma Hoggett hesitantly boarded the bus for her annual women's conference. Her husband had been acting strangely of late. She was worried about what her husband would do all alone. Then again she mused, how much mischief could a dreamer like Hoggett get into in just three days? Great job! Mrs. Hoggett would have been dismayed indeed to see the farmer let Babe into the house to rest by the fire. <coughs> Duchess was quite put out at having to share her space with Babe, and let the pig know it by scratching his snout. <coughs> the farmer Having no patience for the cat's bad attitude, promptly tossed Duchess out into the rain. Very. It had been a long time since Arthur Hoggett had an animal in whose abilities he had so much faith. Ever a truthful man, Hoggett had worried that the National Trial's entry form might read, Name of Dog, and then whatever he put would be a lie. But as it happened, luck, for the moment, was running with him. 
for the form merely read, Name of Entry. It is well to heed the... It is well to heed the old adage, Beware the bad cat bearing a grudge. Duchess had developed a notorious mean streak, and all the animals on Hoggett Farm knew well to avoid crossing her. It was with spite that Duchess cozied up to Babe in front of the fire. She had a score to settle, and a plan on just how to do it. Okay, Babe listened to Duchess with the same good-natured gullibility that had gotten him into trouble with the duck. The fact is that... <sighs> you do know what pigs are for, don't you? she asked. Babe wasn't sure what the cat meant, so she spelled it out for him. Humans raise pigs to eat. <laughs> Babe was heartbroken. He ran to ask Fly if this was true. Yes, it's true, was all the sheepdog could say. The morning of the trials, Babe was nowhere to be found. He had disappeared into the rainstorm the night before. Rex found the little pink pig shivering, cold, and very weak. The boss rushed Babe to the house. If the little pig didn't eat, he would never survive. Babe couldn't understand why the same man who was being so kind to him might one day eat him. Okay, good job. The boss began humming as he cared for the little pig. Babe slowly began to eat. Arthur Hoggett had never once danced in his own house. However, it seemed the most natural thing he could possibly do. Watching the boss sing and dance for him, Babe felt loved. He realized no harm would ever come to him on Hoggett Farm. Chapter 10 That'll do, Pig. Hoggett and Babe arrived with barely five minutes to spare, before they were scheduled to compete. Fly and the little pig were left in front of the sheep pen as Hoggett went to check in with the officials. It was a good opportunity for the pig to introduce himself to the sheep before they entered the ring. <coughs> Excuse me. Hello there, sheep, Babe began brightly. The sheep ignored him. Dad! 
I hadn't thought of this, Fly sighed. I have to go, but I'll try to be back in time, she told Babe. Rex stopped Fly on the way out. When Fly explained her plan, Rex insisted on going instead. Don't worry, the old dog said. I won't let the little fellow down. And with that, Rex turned into a blur of speeding fur. Great job! Rex arrived back at Hoggett Farm and explained to the startled sheep that the little pig was in trouble. The sheep agreed to help, but not before Rex promised to treat them nicely. They gave Rex a secret password, which was only to be told to Babe. He memorized it and raced back to the trial grounds. Good. Meanwhile, the contest officials called a special meeting to decide whether or not Hoggett could compete with his animal. The rule book had no rule barring pigs in the contest. The pig and the farmer ignored the jeers and laughter as they made their way toward the center of the competition ring. Rex suddenly raced out to give Babe the password. Good work! Away to me, pig, called the farmer. With that, the pig trotted over to the waiting sheep. Using the password, Babe kindly asked the sheep to follow him through the course. Not one sound could be heard as the sheep marched side by side into the final pen. As Huggett slowly closed the gate, the stadium exploded in thunderous applause and cheers. In all of the celebration and hubbub of noise and excitement, only two figures stood silently side by side, though every human in the stands and commentary boxes was at a complete loss for words. The man who, in his life, had uttered fewer words than any of them knew exactly what to say. Hoggett looked down to meet Babe's bright eyes and said, That'll do, pig. That'll do. A few cows, some chickens, and a barn, and you're done. Build the farm of your dreams by dragging the farmyard essentials onto the grassy knoll and clicking Print Your Farm, or print the farmyard cutouts to color in and stand up. The kooky coop chickens lay kooky colored eggs. Click on the chickens to match and collect their colorful creations.
Oh no! The sheep are missing! Lead Babe to the lost flock by dropping tasty tidbits next to him. But beware! Wild dogs are hiding everywhere! <coughs> 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 Mrs. Hoggett's mechanical rooster has put Ferdinand out of a job. Help Babe get rid of it by leading him through the maze with tasty treats. <laughs> 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 